What is item potency? It sounds complicated, but what it really means is being able to execute a certain operation multiple times without changing the initial result. Consider this example. You are publishing a domain event that has three event handlers. Event handlers 1 and 2 execute properly, but event handler 3 fails. This causes your domain event to be published again because you have a retry mechanism implemented, but now your first and second event handlers are going to be called again, and you may not want this to happen. For example, imagine that the event handler that is executed for the second time performs a payment using the customer's credit card. You would effectively be charging the customer two times and you really want to avoid this happening. Let's dive into the code and see how we can implement ID potency in practice. We are starting from our background job that processes the outbox messages. We are iterating over the outbox messages and publishing each of them inside of the retry policy. This will cause the domain event to be published multiple times if any of the publishes fails. The problem here isn't necessarily the retry mechanism for publishing domain events multiple times. The actual problem is executing the event handlers multiple times when the previous execution completed successfully. Let's go to our member class and see what we have there. Notice that inside of the member create static factory method, we are raising a new member register domain event. Let's take a look at how this domain event looks like. It's inheriting from the domain event base class, which only defines an ID property for the domain event. This ID will become the primary key for the outbox message when this domain event is converted into an outbox message. The member register domain event has two handlers. The first event handler is for sending a welcome email to the member when they are registered. And the second event handler is for performing a background check. This event handler is just for demonstration purposes I'm going to leave the implementation empty. The main thing to note here is that the member register domain event has two domain event handlers. Let's go back to our background job where we publish our domain events. If we were to publish our member register domain event twice, it would cause our welcome email handler to execute twice and we would effectively send the welcome email to the user more than once. Although this isn't harmful, we don't really want to spam our members inbox. How we are going to solve this is by registering the execution of our event handlers. For this, I created the outbox message consumer entity. It's very simple. It contains just the ID and the name of the consumer for this outbox message. The ID here is going to match the ID of the outbox message and the name will come from the event handler that is being executed. So every time when we publish our domain event, before handling the actual event, we want to check in our outbox message consumer table if we have already processed this message for this event handler. And if so, we want to skip it. Otherwise, we execute our event handler and we add a new record to the outbox message consumers table. I'm going to create a new folder in the infrastructure project, which I will call idempotence. And inside of that folder, I'm going to introduce a new class. I will call this class idempotent domain event handler. I will make it public, sealed, and it's going to implement the i domain event handler interface, which will have the t domain event generic argument. Of course, I need to add the generic argument to the class itself. And I want to add the generic constraint that the t domain event must be an i domain event. Let's add the implementation for our interface. The idempotent domain event handler is going to implement the decorator pattern. I'm going to inject the actual event handler that we are decorating. To do this, I'm going to inject the inotification handler instance coming from mediator. I will call it decorated and inject it from the constructor. I'll, I'll make our handle method async and inside of it, we can await the execution of our decorated handler. I'm going to pass in the notification and the cancellation token. Now our idempotent domain event handler effectively wraps the event handler that we want to decorate. And now we can introduce the idempotency logic with the outbox message consumer. I'm going to also inject the application database context inside of this class. Let me fix the constructor so that it's more visible. And let's focus our attention on the handle method. The first thing that we want to do is to check if this event handler has already consumed this domain event. To do this, we're going to write a link you query. I'm going to say a 
await db context set outbox message consumer and I want to check if there is any consumer for this domain event. So I'm going to say any async and I want to match by the ID coming from the notification ID and the name which will come from the decorated event handler type. So I'm going to say decorated get type name and I'm going to store this in a variable. So I'm going to say string consumer. Let's also pass in the cancellation token to our any async call. What this query checks if is there a record in the database for this domain event ID and this consumer. If this is the case, it means that this event handler already executed successfully and we can safely return. Otherwise, we execute our event handler for the first time and now we need to add the corresponding outbox message consumer record. I'm going to say DB context set outbox message consumer and I'm going to add a new outbox message consumer. The ID will come from the domain event and the name will be the consumer value. And we also want to persist this record in the database right away. Let's take a look at our entire handle method. We are checking if we already consume this message. If so, we return from this method and we won't be executing our domain event again. Otherwise, we handle our domain event and after we have done so successfully, we add a new outbox message consumer instance and persist it to the database right away. To actually make our idempotent domain event handler decorate our existing event handlers, we need to add some code inside of our program.cs. We are already registering our event handlers using mediator. And the one thing that we need to do is to decorate our event handlers. So I'm going to pass in the I notification handler interface. This is the interface that mediator will register our handlers with, even though we are using a custom interface. And we want to decorate this interface using the idempotent domain event handler class. The decorate method isn't available out of the box. It comes from the Scrooter library and is what we are using to wire up our idempotent domain event handler. Let's go to our idempotent domain event handler. I'm going to place a breakpoint at the start of the handle method. I'm going to start the application and see if what we have just built actually works. Inside of Postman, I prepared a post request for registering a new member. When I send this request to the API, it's going to create a new member and it's also going to publish the member registered domain event. This will be persisted in our outbox, which we will process inside of the background job. So as you can see, we created a new member successfully and we hit the breakpoint inside of the process outbox messages job. We are processing the outbox message for the member registered domain event. So let's see what happens when we publish this domain event. Inside of the idempotent domain event handler, we are executing our first consumer, which is the one for performing the background check. We are checking if this consumer already processed this outbox message. Since we are handling the domain event for the first time, this is going to return false. We handle our domain event and we add a new outbox message consumer and we save it to the database. Let's hit continue. Now we are executing the welcome email domain event handler. We pass the first check because we are executing it for the first time. We execute the actual handler and we store the outbox message consumer record in the database. Here I'm going to cheat a little and I'm going to return the debugger to this line of code again. What I want to do is force the publishing of the domain event one more time. You can see that we again hit our idempotent domain event handler this time for the perform background check domain event handler. But watch what happens now. Because we have already executed this handler successfully and stored the outbox message consumer record in the database, this time the any method is going to return true and we won't execute the body of our handler for the second time. The same is going to happen for the welcome email event handler. Again, the database is going to return true and we won't be executing the event handler for the second time. This is very beneficial if the domain event is published multiple times in case of a retry and we only want our domain event handlers to execute once. 
If you learned something useful in this video, consider leaving it a like for the YouTube algorithm so that we can reach a wider audience. Subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And until next time, stay awesome.